Hey, Dennis Foster here with Focus Outdoors TV. Literally just rolled into town mid-April, western basin of Lake Erie, uh, Port Clinton, Marblehead area, where Scott Staker's out of, uh, the owner and proprietor of Reef Runner Lures. And quite frankly, I'm here to get lures, information, and advice. And with that, a little history, you've told me some of it, but I think it's interesting for our viewers is how you got started, how it's progressed, and, and where you're at today. Boy, you know, I appreciate you coming. It's good to see you. have been a long way from out um, the Dakotas to come all yeah. the way here. Uh, but it is. It's the walleye capital of the world. It's big fish time here on area in mid-April. And, um, yeah, I mean, we got started years ago. And, you know, I got started out, you know, with the old creepy crawler sets and hand whittling jigs and just making stuff to catch anything. How and, old were you when you started that? Oh, I think my mom hid my tin soldier mold on me when I was about seven or eight. So okay. we were making lead soldiers on a, on a burn plate down in the basement. Okay. And, uh, we'd make jigs and, and uh, you know, actually mold or melt lead on this little... So uh, you're melting your soldiers down oh, yeah. for jigs. Oh, yeah. Okay. And, That's uh, good use. Yeah, and doing that stuff. So it was fish, not war. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. good. It was good. But, um, yeah, and we had the old uh, plastic creepy crawler sets where you made your own plastic stuff and... I don't think they'd sell those today. I mean, it, yeah, it's bad. But um, started back then, and then um, a gentleman wanted to make, um, was making weight forward spinners, making reef runner lures, and, and they were, you know, they looked like this, and they were just back in the day here, back in the, you know, late 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, it was all a, a weight forward casting bite. Mm -hmm. And then the water cleared up. Uh, things went from a, a casting bite to a more trolling bite. Right. And so from that point on, you know, I taught high school biology at the time, coached high school football, still went and guided. You know, I guided for 15 years out here and saw the changes coming and thought, you know what, I wonder if I could develop a couple lures that would also, you know, troll out here, catch fish, but, you know, caught a lot of heck because at that time people didn't like trollers. And now I suppose they looked down their nose. Oh, they, they were, it was bad. Okay. It, was, it was a war. Um, and so since then, everything happened that, uh, you know, the crankbait thing started. Uh, I whittled out some baits. Um, you know, a couple of tournaments were won. Actually, first tournaments were out in, uh, I think, Hawaii, first one. I think you know, Grumbaugh uh, was one of them. Yeah. He taught us about our suspended fish. Yeah, and then that yep. started happening and came back here. So, you know, Reef Runners took off, and we've done the color thing ever since. And, uh, you know, I've done very well with that and also regionally specifically done colors you know basically when when you start out we start out with something is you get an idea so you know i had an idea of making something different not just a straight crankbait like they've been out there so we i, I put a, a pattern down you know cut it out on in wood and basically go from there you whittle it out a little bit you know i've got a lot of stuff in a junk pile that you know we've just burned because it just doesn't work mm -hmm. and once you get something pretty much uh, to where you want it then you can start uh, going to a um, well a whittle bait uh, complete so what we do with these is this is the original ripstick that's what I found interesting um, that I, I didn't want to really catch a fish with it because I didn't want it to pull apart and you know but I wanted to see how it ran so threw it in a farm pond threw it off the docks you know, adjusted things a little bit to where I thought um, it needed to be to catch fish. And from that point, take it to a tool builder, and then, you know, the excitement starts, the money starts. But it's kind of like farming. You know, you plant a seed in the ground, you hope it grows, mm -hmm. you know, you hope it comes to fruition. How much are you going to get for it? Is the weather going to be good? You know, it's just, I call it lure farming. And then, you know, you, you bring it to a, you know, a mold builder, and they make two halves, and once those two halves are complete, um, they, you know, are, we've got some ladies gluing them together uh, with split ring or rings and stuff to hang hooks, rattles, and so forth. And then you get a, um, you know, a paint job where they're all hand painted, airbrushed, you know, clear coated, and then we hook and package them. So we've got an array of colors, but there, there are multiple steps. And people ask me, you know, how long does it take to make one? Well, it's, you know, it's like. You know, one boat, you can't just make one. Right. You make, you know, one at a time, several times over during the day. So, you know, we might make a thousand um, fire tiger at once, you know, all white, mm -hmm. all chartreuse, greenback. One know. thing you touched on, too, is this is all domestic. You're not shipping right. this stuff over, you know, and for a lot of you folks, to me, that's important. So if you're 
overly price conscientious, whatever. There's guys like Scott out here that still truly make this stuff in the United States. So just keep that. One thing I wanted to touch on is tuning and crankbaits, and quite frankly, I think the reef runners have gotten a bad rap over the years on that. Uh, they're not that tough to tune. You obviously know how to do it, and I'll let you take over. Well, in, in, in a crankbait's life, no matter who it is, if it's if it's a reef runner, if it's Rapala, if it's Berkeley, if it's you know whoever, every every lure um, has to be tuned. And the hardest part, and the worst thing about um, Tuning is a net, a rubber net, and nets because you got big fish in the net, you got one hook in its mouth, you got one hook in the net, and you're flopping it in the boat, and there goes a torque on the bait, and it's knocked out of tune. And that's something I was going to touch on. Yeah. If, if the lure's catching big fish, it may get knocked out. So that's right. the lure did its job. You just need on, to fix him up on the little. floor. So what I look at when I'm tuning the bait is make sure that when you put a bait in the water first, you get enough lead line out, maybe six, eight foot, and you're putting it beside the boat. Don't put it back behind. A lot of people want to put it behind yeah, the boat, you're gonna get and you're going to get in that prop yeah. wash, and it's not even going to be close to exactly. where it needs to be tuned. The neat thing about tuning is you can use you know, a pair of pliers if you want, but a lot of guys tend to think this. So if you've got a crankbait, especially a deep diving crankbait, this eyelet in the front needs to be lined up you know, perfectly down the center line of a bait. So what you do not want to do first is take and grab it with a pair of pliers and twist it. You do not want to twist that thing right or left. What you want to do is make sure that's on the center line. And what you want to do is if the bait is running, let's say, away from you in the boat. So if you're in this side of the boat and it's here and it's walking out away from you, so if it's running to the right, let's say, you very slightly want to take this and just fold it over. So you're really taking this and folding it this more way. More the top half. The top, right. and just folding it this way and bringing it so it runs more Versus to the left. Versus what most guys do, they'll actually put an Cannot, angle into you it. You can't do the angle at and all. And I think that's where a lot of guys come up with the yep. problem. They think, well, I, I just worked on that thing and I could not make it run right. right. Well, you're twisting it every yep. way it's but the right way. It's not this way or this yep. way. It's just it's folding it left or right. Um, and one of the things we've done, we've made a little a, a tool. It's called a tuna fish. And the easiest thing to do, you can put it in your fingers and just lay it straight on top. So once you've got it straight on the top, you can't screw it up. You can't screw it up. So now you've got to go this way or this way. You can't twist it. So now on top, you either bend it a little bit to the right if it's running left, and the left if it's running right. Put it back in the water, pull it, and if you can actually, if you're running one five, two, two five, whatever, pull it gently forward. If it tracks straight, you're good to go. Yep. Now if you put a crawler on it, a little say on a crankbait. You know, always put a crawler or a piece of it on the mm -hmm. bottom hook. Anything you do to change it, make sure you retune it. And every time you put it out, run it, tune it again, make right. sure it's straight, set it back out, and you're good to go. You know, all right, we've been talking about a little history in the past and how you got here, a little lure design type stuff. Basically, I want to talk about present and future because I'm going to hit the water this afternoon, yep. the next few days. And I'm not here just to pump you for lures. I'm here to pump you for information. What's been working for the guys color-wise? Well, I'll tell you what. It's, it's, it's so hard, you know, when you come into a place, you know, and just have no oh, clue. Yeah, it's blind. Yeah, so yeah. bait shops are one good thing. You know, obviously, you know, lure manufacturers that are home lakes right here in their backyard is another. But, you know, you got to have friends, you know, in the yeah. networking part of it. But exactly. as a general rule of thumb, you know, the one on the end there is uh, pink lemonade. It's a color we did years ago. Um, still, like one of our top producers, day in, day out, no matter what conditions are. Any part of the are, country. Any it's, part it's of the country. Yeah, us. pink lemonade's been great. Um, some dark water situations, and, and even in clear water situations now, we'll go to anything purples and pinks. Which we've alluded to earlier. Yeah, so that color's purple nurple. Um, night vision with the chartreuse and the black dots is a very good color, you know, when it comes to dark water fishing. And also, you know, we've uh, developed a new color this year, which is uh, Fruit Stripe, which uh, a friend of mine, uh, Mike okay. Robertson, gave to me. Um, very good in muddy water. You wouldn't think so. Why? I have no clue because there's no fish stripe like that. No. Um, no. But This isn't a match hat. Yeah. No, it's <laughs> not a match one. But that one's very good in muddy water. And also it's uh, white um, zebra, the next one over. And that color came from your way. You know, Lake Oahe out there, they like the whites out that yep. way. So it's a really good muddy water color. Whites are always that good. And if you get a chance, you know, when you get out in the open water, and if it clears up again, go back, uh, to, go back to a blue Hawaiian chrome, uh, chrome blue, chrome black, and also, you know, the clear lures. Um, like, this is my favorite 
lure, if I was going to take one lure on a boat, it's Pearl Ghost. It's got that bare naked insert in it, but it has the white, a little bit of red in it. Uh, if guys want to take, you know, magic markers and mark them up a little bit, they can put extra dots. But, I mean, you know, you can get a blue one, pink one. You can do all kinds of stuff when you have that tape, and it's kind of, um, you know, UV um, uh, active where you can get it in sunlight, and it's pink and purple, but you get it out of sunlight, it goes to copper and gold. Okay. So, other than that, you know, like I said, the pearls, the white... You know, and especially the dark colors and dark water. But, you know, sometimes you have to go just to something as gaudy as you can get and as bright as you can get in the muddy water just to, you know, they hone in on vibration. Yep, and I've seen it too. A little on, bit on yep, sound. On a tough day, just throw something helps. goofy out And even some glow. Know. You know, guys got glow stuff and they're putting glow dots on them. Yep. Simple as that. You know, it helps out quite a bit. One thing, too, to touch on separate from the color thing is, is the presentation things. Uh... Crankbait speed. Too many people get stuck into one eight to two mile an hour, and that's a comfort zone, and they won't leave it. Right out here is a good lesson in pulling things super slow. Super slow this time of year. So we're pulling these crankbaits, these reefers with big bills, down to one two one four. And that's, you know, that, and just creeping. And also, you know, the old lead core hand pump rod too. Yep. When you're going that slow, just grab one rod beside. Pump it forward and just let it slide back. Exactly. Pump it forward, let it slide back. And, uh, you know, even lead core with short build baits like ripsticks or rogues or, you know, uh, husky jerk, stuff like that, um, work real well when you're doing that pull technique with lead core. But uh, a lot of different things. But in the summertime here, if you're not catching fish, our motto is go faster. Mm -hmm. So 252832 right. because they're going to hunt On it the out. opposite end. And yeah. that's something I like about your lures is they'll run at all speeds. And, and out here... Like you said, with that big bill, they got that dig, and they're yep. they're they're going to work even and, if that's super slow. Yeah, speed. And, and super slow, and also with a fire line enhances that, and also um, speed wise, depth wise. All right, we're going to wrap it up here. I'd like to thank Scott for all the information and for the years of support. Well, Scott's helped me out over no. the years, and it's uh, it's greatly appreciated. Oh, no problem. You've done a great job out west, and uh, we don't get out there that often, and it's uh, it's a pleasure to have. Uh, you know, ears and eyes out there, exactly. see what's going on. Yeah, give you a little feedback yeah. there. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's great. Yeah.